Hey Brooke again. Okay, so today's topic is talking about choosing you. What does that mean and why should you do it? So over the course of my practice, which has been just around 30 years, um, I, I've seen that the number one problem that people have is that they don't choose themselves. They, ch they listen to other people. They uh, listen to internal messages of negativity. Hi, Hildy. Hi, Becky. And they listen to um, their teachers and preachers and everyone else except for paying attention to their own inner guidance. And so what, if I could, if I could give you one gift, it would be to choose, to learn to choose to listen to you and pick what your higher self. Hi, Elaine. Awesome to see, to see you and David. Um, when you choose to listen to yourself, it's the only way that you can know what's right for you. And it took me a really long time to learn that for myself, to understand that listening to other people's opinions and listening to other people's um, beliefs and listening to other people's ideas and advice, um, including mine, um, it, it is not going to get you where you need to be. Because the truth is, um, number one, only you can know what you like, what you need, uh, what, what your heart desires. And what happens is that people will um, get stuck into a rut because it's, it's easier. You know, um, part of the reason that we, uh, hi Todd, um, if you're new here, by the way, today's topic is um, I'm talking about how to choose you. Um, and why to choose you and what that even means. And if you have only signing on for the first time, please tell me where you're from. And if you have any thoughts or ideas, I'd certainly love to hear them. But um, okay, so what I've learned is that when we are little, um, we learn to adapt to the environment that we live in. Hey, Billy Joe. Um, and when we learn to adapt to that, that life that we are living in, it has to do with living in an environment with these adults who may or may not understand the need to um, to bring up individuals. They they might have learned because our our culture tends to work this way. Children are to be seen and not heard. I heard that a lot growing up. I'm sure plenty of you did also. And when you hear that, the the belief is that what I think, what I feel, um, hi Carrie, and what I need is not important and we shove down our feelings, our responses, our thoughts, our needs and we just sort of absorb like little sponges all of the energy and all of the ideas and all of the beliefs of the people around us and we learn to adapt and to um, suppress our own self in, in recognition of the authority of these other people. Um, so Linda, hi. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn to obey your parents because I think you know we do have to do that. But the problem is that a lot of times in that process we also sacrifice our inner learning to to understand and listen to what's inside of us. Children are not stupid. Children are just uneducated. And so when we treat children as though their ideas, their thoughts, their creative input is dumb or not important, um, hi, hi Sabrina, um, then what happens is that we start to lose our sense of self and we sacrifice our sense of self in order to um, gain the appreciation, the attention, the love, um, and to earn the, the, our approval of our parents rather than uh, learning to value and appreciate who we are and what's important to us and learning to to use our own internal guidance system because we do have an internal GPS that we that we can learn to use and connect to um, hi Hilde and when when we spend our whole lives modeling ourselves under over our childhood I was just talking to someone today about you know we um, are with our parents, raised by our parents until we're 18, and then we spend the rest of our lives trying to sort that out and find out who we are again. And so in order to sort of help you shortcut that, um, hi Christy, um, I'm going to ask you to consider the possibility that what's inside of you is much greater than your parents had any idea was possible. It's to the point that your parents 
out of love and out of um, cultural expectations and out of their own upbringing, they may possibly have kept you from being able to be fully who you are. So you don't know how to choose you. You don't know what that even means. So many of us don't. It's taken me almost all of my life, and I've been here a while, to understand how important it is for us to really start to tune in and listen to ourselves, listen to our higher selves and connect with um, our higher spirit, connect with um, whatever your higher power is within yourself because we all have spirit living inside of us. But what we've done over the course of most of our lives is learned to deny or to, to, to not listen to us. And when we do that, we make very bad choices for ourselves because we end up making choices that please other people, whether it's career or relationships or certain ways of behaving or certain ways of thinking, whether it's the church you attend, whatever it is that, that you relied on external circumstances, external authorities to give you that guidance, you're not choosing you. So the bottom line is, in order to truly choose you, you have to learn how to tune in and listen to you. I understand how difficult that can be because we had these programs um, that were formed in this, um, this database that we have that came from our original programming between the ages probably of birth and six years old to where we learned how to be a, a person based on the information that we gathered as that sponge that we were about how to live, how to be, how to think about ourselves and our place in the world, we, we learn at this very impressionable age. And during that time, we, we, we are forming what becomes our, um, the, sort of the, the guideline for our, the rest of our behavior for the rest of our lives. Scary thought, we don't even remember that time, most of us. Um, I remember bits and pieces. I'm, I'm there. I know people who remember more, but the point is that most, mostly, we don't remember that time, and we make decisions and we make um, conc draw conclusions based on the way that we're treated, based on the experiences that we have, based on the whims of our perhaps dysfunctional parents, and so we start to learn dirt, very distorted views of who we are and who our parents are and what God is at, a, at a, this very young age. And when that happens, we lose connection with ourselves. And, and as time goes forward, we lose more and more connection with ourselves. The truth is inside of us is this vast realm of understanding and knowing that we can take advantage of for our own self, for our own advantage. And that's why it's not selfish because the people that we love, the people that we truly care for and want in our lives, our higher self will respond positively to those people. We will respond in such a way that their well-being matters to us. So we're not gonna walk all over people. That's, that, that's not being, um, that's not choosing for yourself. Choosing for yourself is choosing to love you enough to know what's right for you even if it upsets other people, which I have to say is extraordinarily difficult for me. Um, I grew up in an environment where um, I learned really young how to please everybody because that helped me to survive in my environment. It helped me to please my mother because when she was angry, she wasn't exactly a pleasant person. I learned how to keep her happy. I learned how to make the people around me happy because then I didn't get punished or if I did, it wasn't as severe as perhaps it might have been. So I learned early to please and placate and sweep things under the rug and pretend I was fine and pretend I was not feeling the anger and the hurt and the fear that was going on inside of me and put on this beautiful face of um, making everyone happy and pleasing everybody else. And so as a result, I didn't pay attention to what was really happening inside of me. It took me a very long number of years and a heck of a lot of hours of therapy to get to the place where I could start listening to and paying attention to this whole vast world inside of me. And in order to be able to sort through all that stuff, 
to find my internal GPS, to be able to understand what inside of me needed to be paid attention to. And, and sometimes that can be really hard when you have that much baggage. And I had a lot of baggage. I mean, I'm not saying I still don't. There's always going to be new layers that will pop up because, you know, as long as we're breathing, we're, we still have stuff to work on. But the, the point is that the more you can allow yourself to get in there and listen to the, the distorted thoughts that, that you have based on that early um, basic programming that came with your system when you know between birth and six years old the more you can listen to those distortions and understand what what went awry in your thinking and your conclusions about what was happening in your world the more you can allow of your true self to come forward and the more of you you can learn to choose for when we choose to make other people happy over our own happiness it doesn't work it just plain doesn't work because we cannot make ourselves happy by making other people happy. Ah, here's another thing. We cannot make other people happy. We cannot make other people happy. Boy, that was a tough one for me because all my life I did my best to make my mother happy. And the truth is that at 14, 15 years old, she had a nervous breakdown and clearly I wasn't able to make her happy. She was not a happy person. That had nothing to do with me, anything that I did or did not do. And so, so learning to accept that reality was harsh for me because I, my whole life was based on the idea that I had value and I could contribute and I could make a difference because I could make my mom happy, but the truth was I could not. So that was a pretty eye-opening experience for me. And at that point, a lot of things shifted in my reality and I didn't make a lot of good choices because I had this confusion about that. Hi, Erica. Um, so, so learning to sort through all that old stuff that, that led us to make decisions that were not necessarily in our best interest. Um, Linda, uh, wise woman, yeah, I think you understand it too because I, I'm pretty sure that you also have learned to listen to yourself because what I know about you is you do things, you go out there and do risky things. You do things, you do things that are that do please other people, but you do them because they please you, not because they please other people. And that's what I mean by choosing you, is learning how to choose what pleases you. And I honest to God believe that that is our calling. When we can start listening to that thing that brings us joy, that's why we're here. We're not here to make other people happy because that's impossible. We can't make anyone else happy. We can only make ourselves happy. And, and in so doing, other people will be pleased and some will not. But that's fine because people who are unhappy with things that make you happy, you don't necessarily need them in your life. They can go find other people in their life who do things that make them happy. That's fine. You only want people in your life who are happy and enjoy the things that you do and what you bring. The world has so many varieties and types of people that it's fine because the things that I do that make me happy, that bring me joy, are going to bring into my life more people who also in, enjoy those things and who are, are made happy by the things that I do. And that's awesome. But there will be people who are not gonna be happy about the choices that they make. I recently um, had to break a commitment with someone who was really special to me but I had to break that commitment because I had to choose me. It wasn't pleasant for me and it made her very unhappy. I'm still, still working through that with her, but I am very happy that I made that choice for me because I know it was the right thing for me. I had to tune into me and listen to what was right for me, even if it makes somebody else unhappy, which boy, for the longest time, I really struggled with that. And I see my clients struggling with it every day. Because what I have learned is, we really are not responsible for anybody else's emotions. What emotions you have as a result from things that I say and do, that's about you. It doesn't mean I don't care and it doesn't mean I'm not gonna listen and not gonna make, maybe make some adjustments based on what you tell me. But it is not my responsibility what you feel. And I'm, you're not responsible for what I feel. So if you say something to me and I'm upset as a result of that, it's not your fault. Ooh, that's a big thing for people to understand. 
but it is also, um, I honestly believe the key to being able to be a happy person <laughs> is to be able to understand that other people's feelings belong to them. They do not belong to you. Understanding that boundary and being able to speak your truth with no attempt to harm, protect, or control another person is at the core of what makes us happy people. So choosing you also means valuing you and getting to the place where you can value yourself. One of the hardest things for me was, was I went through a long period of time of feeling responsible for other people's feelings, getting upset um, and really beating up on myself, talking badly in my head to myself when someone was unhappy with something I had done or said or whatever reaction that they had. Um, even if I didn't realize that I had done anything that was upsetting, it upset them and so then I would beat up on myself as a result because it wasn't my intention to upset them and so I thought I was somehow flawed or broken because I had hurt them. Whoa. So what I had to learn how to do was love myself through that and learning to love myself through that has gotten me to the place where I'm really good with who I am. It doesn't mean I'm not going to make mistakes and do things that are stupid because I still do. I mean, there are times in my practice that I think, boy, I called that one wrong. But, but that happens. It, I, I can be imperfect. It's okay. And I, I'm not responsible for other people's reactions. I am responsible to listen and try to be responsible and be about what I say and who, um, who I say it to and how I say it. I want to say things and do things that make a difference for people. It's not always going to land the way I want it to. It, that's not my responsibility, even though I am going to listen and make adjustments and try to do it in a way that gets the result I want. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm responsible for that outcome. Does that make sense? And I know it's really hard, especially when it's a loved one, a child, a parent, um, a spouse is really hard to understand that sometimes you have to choose for you means really making that other person very unhappy. And that's high Gale. That can be a very scary thing to do. But I also see people who choose to live their whole lives not being authentic with who they are and what values they want to have because they're living with someone else who has, in order to, to be with that person, you have to sacrifice your own values. So in, in that process, you give up you. So when I'm talking about choosing you, I'm talking about being willing to risk the relationship and be honest about what you need, what you want, what matters to you, even if it means risking the relationship, because the truth is you don't even have a relationship if you're not choosing every day to be and express you. What you end up doing is having a relationship that's kind of a pseudo relationship, it's kind of a fake relationship because you're both pretending to be something you're not in order to coexist together which a lot of times people will do that because of their kids, because of um, societal pressures, because of um, commitments, but instead of recognizing, hey, it's possible that we can walk this path parallel with me choosing different things than you choose and still choose to stay in relationship, but be honest with each other about what matters to us. It's possible to study different faiths. It's possible to change careers and some make sacrifices that will be difficult for your family, but because they're right for you. Um, and I'm not talking about being selfish. I'm really not. I'm really just talking about paying attention to what matters as a whole to you. And I look back and I know in my life there have been times when family members have made choices to adapt to what other people wanted rather than listening to that internal GPS and they made very bad decisions that ended up um, changing the course of lives. So the more we as individuals can take ownership of our value, of that calling inside of us to listen to our joy, the more we will not only make ourselves happy, the more the world will be a happier place because then we are bringing joy to the world rather than bringing our resentment and our frustrations 
and our um, stress of um, fighting against our true nature. And I, I honestly believe that each of us has this beautiful thing inside of us that can guide us to being all of who we were meant to be. And you know, that doesn't mean we're all, you know, I, I work with a lot of actors, I'm an actor, and, and I know, you know, like myself, there are things I, I would love to do that I'm not doing, and I know there are plenty of other actors out there that would love to do bigger roles and make lots of money and all of that stuff, but that isn't what it's really about. It's really about an opportunity to express myself in this unique way that's what brings me joy and, and it sometimes brings other people joy and sometimes not that's okay but it is something that does bring me joy and I think sometimes if we do that thing that brings us joy we will bring joy to other people and that's the gift of who we are and the more we can allow ourselves to be the gift of who we are the the happier we will be and the happy the happier the people in our lives will be and once we've learned to love ourselves enough, then we start to treat ourselves with, with more love. And that's part of choosing you, is to choose to take care of you. That means paying attention to what you take into your body, paying attention to what you do with your time, paying attention to who you have in your life. Love yourself enough to practice self-care, to get massages, to exercise, to stretch your body, stretch your mind, um, uh, to go outside of your comfort zone and do things that you've always wanted to do but that scared you a little bit. I, you know, I, I know people say, oh, I've always wanted to be an actor. I'm like, then go be an actor. I've had people say, oh, I've always wanted to uh, write a book. Then go write a book. The only thing that stops people from doing these things is fear of failure. Well, the, 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 if you don't do it, then you're already a failure. You've already failed. If you wanna do it and you haven't tried it, then you're already a failure. So go out there. I've, you know, I've, I've written a book, I've written screenplays, I've uh, made a movie, uh, Promises, you can see it on Amazon. And while, while it's not perfect, whatever perfect is, it was a perfect expression of what I had available to me at the time. Hi, Noah. And doing those things, taking those risks to get out there and, I mean, live your life because this is your life. That's how you choose you. You choose you by living your life. Don't live somebody else's life. If, if whatever it is that you are called to do, that's uniquely you. And I, 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 I remember uh, when I was 13, I shared this with some of my um, audience members at church um, a, a couple months ago when I, when I did the services at Unity, which was to talk about my calling that happened to me when I was 13. I was um, in prayer, I had read the Bible, and I was totally in prayer. And I was like, God, what is it I'm here? Why am I here? Because I could see, you know, that this was like in 1969 when, you know, the Vietnam War was happening and integration was happening and drugs were coming into to the, the world in a terrible way. And so I, I was like, why am I here? What am I, what am I supposed to be doing? And the message that I got was, you are a minister of love. And I was like, I'm a, I'm a girl. What, what does that even mean to be a minister of love? And so therefore I spent the next, you know, 40 years, 50 years figuring out what that means. And um, it meant some, in some ways it meant um, finding out what love is not, finding out what love is, finding out how to love myself, finding out how to truly love another person. And so now uh, I find myself at a place where I think I have taught love through my counseling, through my books, through my movie, uh, movies. Um, and and I, I feel like being a minister basically is administering people to love, love themselves, love others, and be present for each other. Because that is to, you know, when I read the Bible, my, my main 
understanding afterwards was, oh, God is love. And if God is love, then, then being in love means being in God. And having love inside of us means we have God inside of us, means we are here to be who we are, and that we are so loved that we are to be us, to choose us. That is why we're here. So my, my message today is mainly that I, that I wish for you the courage to choose you. Choose that beautiful, precious thing inside of you that is unique, that only you can express whether it's um, a bakery, whether it's a um, charity, whether it's a, uh, a parenting, whether it's uh, sharing your essential oils, whether it's sharing your message, whatever it is, being an actor, being a singer, being a filmmaker. I mean, all of us have these unique things that we want to bring into the world. And when we can really focus on allowing ourselves to choose that to express that thing that we were brought here to do we make the world a better place I was listening to um, uh, Jana um, I'm suddenly blanking on her name she was at church on Sunday um, the singer and she sang this incredible song um, and I've been listening to some of her other music and uh, Stanfield Jana Stanfield um, and and her messages are delightful because they really are about choosing you, choosing to love you and knowing that when you do that, you are doing exactly what you were born to do. So choose you. I understand it's scary and if, if it's too big, get some help. Go to a counselor, go to a consultant, go to a, a coach, um, go to your minister and help get some, get some guidance. And in, I will go back again to the, the idea of mindfulness and learning to go to that mindfulness practice, learning to be quiet in your mind and in your body and settle yourself and just listen and be open to source helping you open more to who you are. Um, and the more that you can do that, the more you can allow that you to express in the world, the more you can get yourself centered into that place, the more you will know. You won't have to try and figure it out. You know, so I'll have people say, well, how do I know? And they try to figure it out. Well, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Instead, center yourself and listen to that internal GPS because inside of all of us is this ability to connect to a higher knowing that we can only experience when we go to that meditative prayer place where we can listen and tune in to our higher self, to God, to our spirit, to love, to be able to be who we were meant to be here. So, um, I'm really happy that you guys tuned in today and I, I encourage you to take some time today to be mindful. I was talking to someone earlier today who was talking about um, having listened, having read The Artist Way and that one of the things that he had gotten out of The Artist Way was um, the, the getting up in the morning first thing before you're fully awake and just journaling, writing down whatever thoughts are in your head. That's a great way to start connecting with yourself. And for a lot of us, there's layers of pain, fear, tragedy, grief that we have not worked through that sort of interfere with our ability to tune in. So when that's the case, you, it's really important that you do get a, a, a skilled counselor who can help guide you through that and help you understand and remember the distorted thoughts that came with those tragedies. because. Most of the time, we have distorted ideas about what those tragedies or traumas may have meant about us. And we, we sort of get stuck um, emotionally in, in treating ourselves unkindly often when there are these um, unprocessed traumas, griefs, pains from our past. So 
sometimes those voices can interfere with our ability to find the love for ourselves. So learning to change those voices, learning to understand, listen to them. You know, a lot of them are unconscious. In fact, the process of therapy is about making the unconscious conscious. So in order to get back to you, in order to start to learn to choose you, you have to sort of uncover what is not you. So if you've not done that, if you've not done the work of therapy, I highly suggest that you start that process. Um, I have a book, it's called Oh Wow This Changes Everything, and I have a, a workbook that goes with it that is the Oh Wow Healing Guide, which can actually work as as an adjunct to any therapy that, you, or if you're not in a, perhaps in a, a location or you don't have the money right now to do therapy, it might help you get started in that process for yourself to start cleaning out the stuff that keeps you from being able to, to choose you. So um, I guess that's about it for today. Um, thank you for being there, all of you. I really love that you to take your time um, and I'm gonna, uh, quote from uh, Late Night, which I saw a couple of weeks ago, which is, um, I hope I've earned the um, time that you have spent with me. So um, you can find out more about me on MelodyBurt.com. I also have a YouTube channel, and my book is on Amazon and Kindle, and um, I will see you next Monday at 4 p.m. Don't know what I'm going to be talking about yet. I'll let you know. Also, I'll be with the 4 at 4 on Thursday. So talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave any questions, thoughts that you have afterwards on, on this um, notation. Thanks. Bye.